some, as someone said once, I think the best part of writing is having written. So, uh, somebody's been corrupting the velvet snake. Um, this is Lord Parks, this is Watching the Work, and the lobby of the public theater for those of you who are hanging out with us online today, courtesy of Howl Rally. And for those of you who know, it's so good to see you guys twice in one day. Or just you, Chris Barlow. The fabulous Chris Barlow has joined this. And so now we're really happy. Did you just come from the gym or something? Yes. You did? Yes. <laughs> you have that glow. Oh. You have that, I just, or I just got. <laughs> I didn't want to ask that. There might be children watching. <laughs> anyway, you're glowing. Um, so, uh, Watch the Work is a to play, and this is the action, and uh, we're going to do some dialogue a little later, and it's also a free writing class in which we talk about your writing process or your work process. It doesn't necessarily have to be writing. So what we're going to do is, well, first of all, Caroline's going to tell us if you're online and you want to tweet us a question about your work or about your writing process, Caroline will tell us how to do that. You can tweet at us to the handle at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound or hashtag New Play. That's different. They changed it. We got another hashtag. Oh, we got two hashtags. Okay. Well, we got two hashtags. I don't know what that means. Um, yeah. Okay. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to do the action part first, which means that we're going to write, those of you who are writing, those of you who are doing your woodworking projects at home, begin. Um, those of you who are writing, uh, we're going to write for 20 minutes and then uh, we're going to do the dialogue which is talking about your work and your creative process. Okay, so do we have our, Caroline, you have your timer? Yeah, how long do we want? We're just going to do 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. Do 20 minutes and we'll chat a little bit and we'll be done. Okay. All right. So, yeah, hold on. Let's synchronize our, uh, our synchronize our phone. Uh,
right, now we're going to do the dialogue part, the talking. I hope you have some mm, questions. aspect to it, uh -huh. possibly. Uh -huh. If everyone else around me is working, then it's harder for me to sort of slack off and appear right. as if I'm not getting anything done. Right. It might also be something like the combined effort of everyone makes me feel more focused, mm -hmm. but I certainly get a lot more work done when I'm with other people. Right. Same applies for studying. I study a lot better in the library really? when there's lots of other people at the uh -huh. table studying with me. Uh -huh. I, would, I would, I mean, I, I, I agree. I think it's, I mean, I would, because you can always fake it. Yes. You know, we do have the passage of one, I guess. You know, we, we know we can always fake it, right? So I would, I, would, I, I think the second half of what you said is really true. It's a combined energy of people, um, which is why, you know, marathons, I suppose, are run in groups. You know, go! And I'll go, you know, it's that energy. Um, for the, for the, yeah, I'm sure even the elite runners um, get energy from the combined energy of everybody. So, yeah, we are social creatures at our best, I think. It's interesting. Hey, Roberto! Hi! Hi! Your reading is on Thursday. Thursday. I would love to make a whoop with my mouth for Wednesday. It's on Thursday at 3 o'clock? 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Okay, okay. We will have Jesse. Thank you. Ricardo is reading. Do you want to ask What's the name of the play? Uh, it's called Separate and Equal. Separate. Oh, I love it. Oh. We, we like that title. Mm -hmm. Separate and Equal. Yeah. Yeah, all right. And he's got a reading of it this coming Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Where is the venue? Um, it's at the Sheep Center, just down the street. So you may go down the street and make a left on the window. Down the street and make a left on the window. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you, John. It's a great Thank you. Separate. Right on. Anybody else have any uh, announcements for their shows? Or? No, no. No. This is just for a here. One thing uh, which, which isn't dependent on others, um, I mean, we, you know, we might work really well or at our best when surrounded by others. But also, just to, it occurred to me as I sat here, how important it is to put the time in. Really, it's like, it's the one thing that, um, 
I, I believe will always pay off handsomely or beautifully, you know, just putting the time in. So if we find, again and again, if I say, oh, I'm having trouble working on such and such, I really look back in my week or in my day or whatever and ask myself, have I put some time in? And again, so we're not talking about a five or ten hour writing day, I'm not talking about anything like that. Just a daily, steady chunk of time, an hour or 20 minutes or whatever, whatever I can manage. Um, am I putting the time in? And often I'm having so much trouble, often because I'm not putting the time in. I'm kind of thinking about doing it or wanting to do it, but I'm not putting the time in. So over and over again I'm reminded about, wow, it's so important just to sit down every day and put the time in. Um, I think it's a lesson I have to keep learning over and over and over. It's not going to write itself. Um. Oh, yes, Carter. Actually, do you have a question? What with like something coming up that's yes. kind of, you know, yes. the script isn't done, right? Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not finalized. I mean, you know what I mean? It's, in, it's still in process. Right. But the draft's going to be ready. Okay. Um, just, just, you talk a lot about how you know those those voices in your head that keep you from writing and the manifest ways in which they do that. Right. And I'm, I'm now at the point where I'm dealing with the voices in my head that keep me, tell me to keep writing and keep changing and make it better, make it better, and you, you know, and I, I'm trying to figure out how to negotiate the point where I need to walk away so I don't go crazy uh -huh. about it, but and also to like take care of myself. And I don't know what that balance is yet, right now. In this yeah, 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 yeah. I, you know. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, because it's not finished and you're having a draft read, so it's not that you're having a draft, you know, it's not that you're having your opening night on Thursday at 3 p.m., your opening afternoon, um, and it's also in the evening, but what do you say when you're rewriting? What are we talking about? Are we talking about brand new chunks of huge, ginormous page chunks, or what are, we, what are you talking about? We're, we're talking about significant alterations to scenes, like taking out like half the scene and condensing it. And, uh, right, you know, I taking, understand. And, and cutting things that I'm not sure I want to cut, like, oh, yeah, just okay. to streamline it. Uh -huh, you know? yeah. um, so it's, it's, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, I know I understand. Okay, so you're having to, well, I asked, you're having to read it, just establish. So Ricardo's having to read it, which means you can change close to the, the, the time that the, the curtain goes up. Yeah. But since you're changing big chunks, you want the actors to feel solid. And you're going to be rehearsing how often before they're... Just once, four hours before. Okay, once, four hours Okay, okay, no, 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 so, that, so once, four hours before. So it's not like you're going to be handing the actors, throwing the you know, new pages at the actors right before they go on stage. You, you wouldn't want to do that. No, 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 no. Okay. I don't, want, I don't want to be rewriting in the room. That's one of my impulses. I love that, like be able to do that, but that's not this situation, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Um, uh, so what I would, I would suggest is start making a list of every time you want to change something, instead of jumping into the play, right, write it down on a piece of paper. Like that's not the play. You see what I mean? So you have a nice notebook or something? You like a, or maybe you could buy a new one for this occasion. <laughs> that's always fun. You know, but you know, you have a nice notebook, right? Every that's just dedicated to this project? Um, no, not okay. So you go, you know, go to the I mean at Walgreens or whatever, if you want to go, you know, low end, cool, and get a notebook, right? That's just for this project. And every time you want to change something write it down in the notebook and sleep on it. It's like, think of it as like, every time you want to tell your partner, like, write it down. And put some space in between you and the act. Right? Okay. And then if the next day it seems like a good idea, right, then maybe go for it. You've only got a couple of days, which is good, see? So the things you want to change, write them down in your notebook, okay? and then sleep on them, and then wake up and look and see, okay, I want to change those things, great. And then it will be Tuesday, right, okay? And then if you want to change more things, write them down 
then it'll be Wednesday, then it'll be Thursday, then you'll be, so you limit, you kind of put a control on it. That's one thing you can do. Or just write them down in a notebook and don't do any more guys. Or just write them down in a notebook and just circle like one a day. You guys do one a day. I'm going to just rewrite that scene. You see, just, just yeah. slow down the process because I think you're probably getting what we all get jitters, you know. I have to fix it, I have to make it great, you know. I'm running out of time. So just slow down the process. Get yourself a notebook for this process. That's really important. Know that it has like its own. Oh, yes, sir, please walk through. He's going probably some really fancy um, Anyway, um, but right, so it, it might, it would be really nice to get a notebook for this project, just for this project, the rewriting process of this project. It'll make it feel good and like it has somewhere to go specifically. Okay, now I definitely want to be there on Thursday. So I can sound like I'm like, cheer you on, bring my like, cheer your <laughs> That's awesome. My cheers are better than that. Yeah, I know. That was the best. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're good. And stomps, too, and all this kind of stuff. It gets kind of elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see it. Um, anybody else? No. Yes. Yeah. Remind me of your name. Rob. Rob. Hi, Rob. Uh, so, obviously, like, this is set up to write and sit down and kind of clear distractions on some level. Um, do you find that you write generally in places that are the same place, the same time kind of thing, or do you try to go out and have different environments kind of influence how you're writing, um, and uh, what, what kind of situations do you put yourself in while you're writing? Yeah. yeah. What do you do? I try to go to a lot of different environments. And have them, you, know, you go to, Rob goes to or, different environments at different yeah, times of day? Yeah, different times of day, like, a, like get on the train or yeah, go out to... You know, go far out on you know, 275, but you know, you, yeah. you can get out pretty far and, and be writing while you're traveling. Like, right. Like a journey. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That sounds like fun. No, th those are all fun. I, whatever works. I mean, I, I have a small child, so my time is a little funny. Um, so I tend to write, you know, same place around the same time. Yeah. But. I would totally, you know, experiment. That's a really fun thing to go, especially on the train, get on the train or subway, you know, or the Metro North, or, you know. Um, it's really fun to ride on the train or the bus. Really fun to ride on the bus. But I wouldn't say that, I mean, it works for you, but I wouldn't say, like, try doing these things, you know, try doing these writing gymnastics. Because actually, um, I mean, that requires, you know, getting out of the house, going to the you can actually get the same, you, know, you can actually get really good work done just by being consistent in terms of, I'm going to sit at my desk, I'm going to sit at my desk, same, around the same time every day, because then the muse will know where to find you. You know what I mean? You know, so if that works for you, great, go for it. And if you don't have the kind of time that's flexible like that, um, or you have some space that you can call your own, like a, a desk or an office or a, an apartment that's free during the day or during the night when your roommates are out or whatever, I would suggest just finding the time and being consistent so that your muse can find you. If you have kids that have demand, you know, you know, you know, you got to kind of work around them. Um, and you, you know, because that consistency is, some people go and sit in their parked cars and write in their garages, you know, it's kind of whatever, whatever works, really. Um, but I think the most important thing is to work it. You know, whatever works. Yeah, you know, definitely. I have an anecdote. Yes, okay. Which is that, I, that someone told me once that Marcel Proust would only write in a room lined with cork. Yes, 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 yes. Remembrance of things past. Yeah, Proust, yeah, that was his room at home. Um, and he had, you know, people taking care of him. You know what I'm saying? Service and stuff. Uh, so he didn't have to go out to the shopping or like change the kid's diaper. He was chilling in his cork lined room, writing Remembrance of Things Past, which is a great book. Um, yeah, but that's how he wrote. But right, but right, you wouldn't suggest, like, that's what we're going to do. We're going to get a cork lined room. 
or I can't write because I don't have a cork line room, right? You know, so yeah. So, but yeah, but that is true. I mean, that's what I, I've heard of Santa because I, I, I don't know. It might be a lie, but you've all heard. Have you all repeat? But yes, sir. I'm, I'm writing a piece. I've been writing it for a long time, and I've been. And it's, and it's kind of the same way, kind of talking myself out of ideas right. that I, I loved at first. Right. I thought it was, an, in my heart, it was an original piece, but now as time has gone by, I realize that it's kind of a combination of some classic tales that I have kind of modernized. Right. I, I, I wonder, should I, should I turn away from that in, in, in realizing that I've done that? I mean, it's, it, it's a combination of a... Alice in Wonderland tale and, right. and kind of like the alchemist now and it's not really what right. I intended right. but I'm seeing it now right. Right. And, and so I wonder right. is that something to turn away from since, I, since I'm seeing it in my writing even though it wasn't intended in that way yeah. well this oh this is great so it's, what's your name Jahi Jahi yes so Jahi has another version I said so uh, we all have versions of what you're talking about. And basically it's a version of stop, don't write, right? Yeah. You're on the wrong path. Yeah. Your version is, it sounds like you're working with Thousand Wonder Man and the Alchemist Giant. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right? Okay. Someone else last week had something about their would their mom like what they wrote. I don't know, would your mom like it? I don't know what your mom would think. It's the same, uh, it's a version of stop, don't do it, turn around, quit, right? Do you understand, do you understand what I'm saying? Yours is just appearing to you in this form. You're on a path and your goblin, forgot who, is appearing to you in this form, in the form of, I don't know if you should be doing that because you're doing it wrong, or are you sure you want to be doing it like that? Right? You, do you like what you're writing? Yes. <laughs> it looks like you like it a lot. Then I would say keep going. As your little, the little flying fairy over here. Keep going. Keep going. Don't worry about it. You see what I'm saying? I would say keep going. And it's okay that it's Alice in Wonderland meets the alchemist. I'm sure like nobody would really know unless you told us in the liner notes in the program or whatever. Or you talked about it in the interviews that you had leading up to the opening of the project. You know what I mean? It's okay. I mean, everything is born of everything. We're all related. And that's a good thing. You see what I mean? I mean, I don't, when I say, oh, wow, I'm writing something that's, that sounds like Something. I mean, everything I write sounds like something. You know, oh, look at that. You know, sometimes I intentionally go, yes, I'm writing something that looks like something, something. But sometimes not. But the story, for example, the story of a man coming home from war, that's specific to my family. It's also specific to millions of other families and millions of other tales and literature. Yeah. So it begins to lean or stand on the shoulders of the great works of literature. That's not a bad thing. Just keep going. Are you at the end yet? Or have you reached the end of your draft? Um, no, no. The first act is so completely different from the second act that I've I've stopped myself beginning in the almost the middle of the second act. Right, right. So two things. One, tell yourself the story of your. It's a poem, right? Um, it's a musical. It's a musical. Tell yourself the story of your musical. Like just in terms of once upon a time, Jackie, I'm gonna tell you a story. Once upon a time there was this thing, this happened, and 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 in the end it, this happened. Just tell yourself the story in that way, once upon a time. Okay? As you would tell like a, a three-year-old. Right? Okay? And so that's one of the signs that you do. And just talk to yourself as you not not you don't have to move your lips, right? Okay. But just, when you're walking down the street, do oh, okay, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Now it's not winter, so we're in trouble because we can't wear our scarves. Right, right. So everyone sees our different Right. Hopefully, hopefully. You know, but so tell yourself the story of your musical in really simple kind of bullet points or how flashcard phrases, okay? 
even maybe write it out on flashcards, you know, eight flashcards. Boom, once upon a time, this happened, and 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 in the end, blah, 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 blah happened. Right? That's number one, you gotta do that. So you can walk around and tell yourself the story easily. You can maybe get it when you're on the train like Rob does, you're telling yourself the story. You're constantly telling and retelling yourself the story. Get the big chunks down. And right to the end, starting from where you are right now. Don't go back to the beginning. Ha ha, yeah, I'm like, yeah, hey, hey, hey. yeah. I know, that's I know why you're laughing. You're not allowed to go here. So you start, you continue from where you are right now. In act two, where it's totally different. And it's okay, you know, uh, Dorothy, you heard of her, right? Kansas, Oz, they look different, right? What was she like? Yo, I'm in, I'm in Oz right now, y'all, I'm forget this. We're not going any further. It looks totally different from, from where I was a minute ago. Yeah. Wonderland. You said it was like Alice in Wonderland. You know, she's like, I'm, I'm quitting because it looks different from my Okay? So you finish, you get to the end, and you see what you got. So those two things, all right? And just like, <clears throat> grit your teeth, steal yourself, put in the time. You don't listen to that person on your path. Going. Keep on keeping on. Okay? You're welcome. Thanks for asking. That's a great question. Anybody else? Yes, Crystal. How are you doing? You got here. No, so you got here though. Somebody got here. All the way from like New Jersey. Yeah, the Bronx. Uh, oh, the Bronx. The Bronx. Wow. Um, um, okay, so you gave me homework. You told me, well, I told you my conflict was that the second draft was different from the first draft. Right. And it looked like two different plays. Right. And you gave me the assignment to integrate and then to also put them together. So I haven't gotten to the integration right, part because right. I was, I've been working on uh, putting them together. Right. And and you you were right. It it seems like two plays that kind of stand alone. Okay. Oh, cool. It, um, but the prop, but my conflict, well, a couple conflict, a lot of conflict. But um, one of them is that I feel like I don't know how to explain it. Okay. Like one is I I want them to I want it all. I want them all. Okay. You know. But I I don't know if the arcs. You know the way I, I had it was that. I told you what it was about, but yeah. you know, the one was light and fluffy. Yes, right. Right. Okay, okay. right. And it seems fluffy, right. and then the other one is, is not fluffy. Right. And I was able to work out like a, a scene in the middle, right, um, or a set a part in the middle right. of when the actual event happened. Right. So it kind of looks like almost like a last five years kind of thing where it okay. kind of turns around. Okay. But I don't know if it works. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Um, and I don't know. I think mostly, I don't know if I feel if if it's redundant. If the arc is not is a plateau as opposed to kind of overriding because you know he has this thing and the thing that connects them is the event. But right. I don't know if even on, I guess maybe on both both particular plays together, if the arcs are <coughs> parallel in. Right, because the same action is happening. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's the same thing that happens, except it happens in a different way. Or it, it, they parallel each other, but they're different. Actually, that, that totally makes sense. It could completely, I mean, it, it could be all one play. First time you see it, it happens one way, then something in the middle happens. Second time you see it, it happens a complete, the same thing happens with a completely different tone. That makes sense to me. Even if you see your repetition, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, it's, I mean, it's, it's an abstract, but it's a, it, 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 even though it's a repetition of the same action, guy breaks into a woman's house and they get together. Yeah, he wants to marry her. Right, right. Okay. They haven't seen each other in like million years. Right. Since the event. Right. Right, and then the, you, then you see the event, so it's kind of a flash back. Right, and then you see it happen again, again in, in, a, in a very different way. Yeah, I mean similar beginnings, but right. different way. And I guess maybe what I was looking for was maybe, you know, 
you know, again, the beginning is so fluffy. Right. Well, I think I say I think it's fluffy, and the right. second is so heavy. But there's still a sense of humor. And maybe I maybe I was trying to go for like black white. Like this right. is just you know tragic with maybe some hope, but this is like hope, and then maybe not so much. You know. Right. Right. And the event, the event, the crown heights event, happens. Um, in the middle, in, but the middle. in time, in real time, in chronological time, historical time, it happened before he broke into her house? Yes. Uh, like, uh, like, maybe 15 years before. Right. So could you rearrange those events? Rearrange? I, 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 it seems like it makes sense to me. I mean, I would sit there and watch it. I would sit there and watch a play where some, an event happens, and then some historical event happens, and you see the same event happen in a different with different tones. But how, well, you know, I, I, maybe I'm writing off too much. I, you know, with the parts too, you know, there's there's a strong start. He breaks into it. Right. And then he says he wants to Like right. weird, crazy right. stuff. And then it's like, you know, is it fizzle? Does it fizzle? You know what I mean? I mean, the events are still, you know, these people are stuck in our house in the snow right. and they have to just deal with each other. And right. I'm like, well, what do you do when you're stuck with somebody for two, three days you haven't seen in a while? Right. Like, you know, right. what 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 do I do to keep it interesting other than right. chit chat? Okay, right. Okay, and that's a separate question. Oh focus sorry. well no no no. So focus on how it's okay. Focus on what the characters want. It's not, I mean you, you might have done that already, but refocus on what the characters want. What do my characters want, and what are they doing to get it? You see what I'm saying? And do what we suggested that Jackie do. Tell yourself the story. Take, put the drafts aside, and say, okay, Crystal, I'm gonna tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was, and then this happened, and then this happened, and he wanted this more than anything, and she wanted that more than anything. And that happened, and that happened, and that happened, and that happened, and then in the end, that happens. So put your drafts aside and just tell yourself the story. You see what I'm saying? Simply, maybe put them on flashcards. It sounds like you ride the train a lot, I know. So go ahead and ride the train. Do it on the way home. You know, do it as you're going home tonight. You know, just tell yourself the story simply because it sounds like you've got a lot of stuff in there. It's all twisted together. Twist it up together. Just tell yourself the story very, very simply. You see? And maybe you'll have to throw out some of the stuff and just keep one. Tell the story as simply as you can. Uh-huh. See if that works. Okay. Tell yourself the story over and over and over and over. Okay? He wants this more than anything. She wants that more than anything. This is the story. This. this is what happens. This is what they're doing to get what they want. Right? Anybody else? This isn't a question, but... Um, <laughs> we're talking about rewrites a lot. Yeah. And... Like, I'm in a position right now where I have a, a full length that I've written two and a half complete drafts of. Two complete drafts okay. that were said, this is a draft. Right. Um, and now I'm to a point where I kind of hate a lot of that. And uh -huh. I've started writing a lot of new material. And it's, it's not a play that needs to get longer by any means. Okay. And so I'm, I'm struggling with this thing of when you have the shape so when the shape feels so like this is the shape of it right and then you have all these new bits that you feel like i like these more uh -huh. but this is the shape right how do i how do i get out of this like how do i break the shape and if i break the shape am i going to break the play and am i going right. to hate myself right. for doing that right, right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, my guess is that you're because I, I i i know chris because I, I see some his writing often on a weekly basis my guess is i guess i don't know but my guess is, is that you're hearing, first you heard this level, and then now you're hearing this level, and now you're hearing this level. So I would say keep the shape and just write 
to that lower level. So if you can, exchange the bits that you like for the bits that you don't like, but keep the shape. Because you're probably writing deeper and deeper and deeper into the heart of the story. So keep the shape and just trade out the bits. That's what I would suggest. Because you're not going to lose the shape. You yeah. know what I mean? You, and the bits, oh, I like that bit better, so switch it back. But I would say take the bits that you love and put them in there. Because it's probably, you're probably closer to the, remember we talked about the rhythm today, that rhythm, that deep, um, ground, water, underground river of the story. You're probably deeper, closer to that than your first or second take. So I suggest that. And you still have the old draft. You have the old draft. It's not like you're throwing anything away. Replace, basically. Replace the bits. Keep the shape. Because you're probably, your big story beats are probably really strong. That's my guess, knowing that you're writing. Your big story beats are probably boom, bop, bop, bop. Right? That makes sense? Yeah. So you can have your cake and eat it. <laughs> of course you can have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Anybody else? Mm. Or eat your cake and have it too. Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> can you explain what you mean by this? Yeah, yeah, so it, so, it, um, so, you know, uh, what do we have? Like, King Lear, King Lear. So there was this old guy, and he, uh, you know, one day he wanted to give away his whole kingdom to his daughters. And so he does that, and then he's out on his ass, and he wants to hang out with them, but nobody wants to hang out with him, except the one that didn't get nothing, because she wasn't going to kiss his brain. And then, so he wanders the countryside, things fall apart, and in the end, he dies. His fool dies. His daughter dies. Okay, but the end. That's the shape. But the bits, the switch out bits are like, you know, outfile jelly. Oh no, man, I don't want outfile jelly. I want to cut off his, cut out his tongue. You know, I mean, yeah, that one. You know, so those are the bits. I like the tongue better than the eye. Or first with a finger. Now it's gonna be an eye. You know, maybe first draft he was only cutting off a finger. But he cut out the tongue, and he's like, yo, that's like, what is that play where he cuts off that girl's tongue? Titus and Yeah, Titus and Brown. I did that already. I'm gonna save that for another play. I'm gonna I mean, I don't know. Is that, yeah. So I'm keep the big story arc thing because it's probably solid if you've done a couple drafts. So you keep keep the big story arc thing, but you're trying to find that tone in there, the, the inner beats. Okay, and you're trying to find Johnny the end. Do you have any questions? You come all this way. From <laughs> all. Uh, I've worked mostly as an actor and a director, but I, I want to be writing, uh -huh. and I just sort of keep writing every day, but I haven't found a play yet. Uh -huh. I'm just wondering if you have thoughts about like starting, like, yeah, yeah, like getting yeah. seeds and like fanning the flame. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's so you're, you're putting in the time every day, so like you're putting in the time? Yeah, I'm writing like sort of more brain drain, random observation sort of stuff. That's okay. But I'm That's not, okay. yeah. So I haven't like written a thing. That's okay. That's cool. That you put, but what's important, you're putting the time yeah. in. So you have a writing practice. Like you have the, the habit. Uh, it's like going to the gym. You have a habit of, of sitting down or whatever and writing wherever you want, whatever, whatever time you want on a daily basis. Great. So what you can do is sort of like a fun thing is write like a list of 10 stupid things that you would like to write a play about. They have to be stupid though. They can't be good. They have to be dumb. Like 10 dumb things that might be cool to write a play about. 10 really dumb things. And you know, look at the list and maybe one of them is less dumb than the other. <laughs> and then you're like, actually one of them is kind of pretty good. And then maybe you pick that one. You know what I mean? Like, oh wow, well, that might be fun. And then do it again. Do it like what we told Jackie. Well, and then if you pick one, like a play about a woman in New York who, you know, I don't know what, um, lives in the subway. You know, okay, so there she is. She lives in the subway, and this happens, and this happens, and she wants more than anything. This, and in the end, that happens. Tell yourself the story over and over and over. See it. Feel it. Is that? Yeah. It's a little painful.
keep my numbers, but it's fun to do it to work that way, you know? Okay, so that's kind of how you can start just choosing something, and then your daily writing can sort of go toward that thing. But pick 10, they have to be stupid things, they can't be good ideas. <laughs> Not wrong. If you were given a, t if somebody gave you a topic to write about, and yeah. they just said, how do you, <laughs> But you really would never have thought about it before. Right. But it's like, it could happen for you could then write a play and get it produced because this person said, if you write it, it'll happen. Okay. But you have no connection to it. Where, how, you know what I mean? Like you have no connection to it. Right. How do you begin that process? Right. That's if great. you choose to. Sure, Dougie, this is like work for hire. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So you find a connection. Hmm find your connection. So it, it will do you no good to sit, I mean, not that you're doing this at all, but it will do one no good to sit around and say, I have nothing that I have no connection with these people. You know what I'm saying? That's not going to help you, right? You say, How, what, what skin do I have in that game? Where am I? You know? Because we can't define ourselves as just, which is, of course, it's not true. We're so much more than just this, right? There's so much, there's so much more going on. Otherwise, again, going back to my favorite writer, Mr. Williams, he never would have written. I mean, you know, he wasn't King Lear and Richard II and Richard III, you know, right? Right? I mean, I don't think so. Maybe he was, but he had all those people inside him, somehow. Right? Just like we have a lot more people inside of us than just this thing right here, right? So you say, where is my connection to that material? And it might come to you in a surprising way, you know. Um, maybe there's one of the characters, a minor character, a small character, that might be your window in. I see myself there. Or I love the music. Or this time period is really exciting. Or the costumes, they are really killer. Sure, I know what I can do with it. I, know how, I love the way it looks. And then you find your way in, you know? Yeah. The black phone died. Okay, does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We got the microphones. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for coming today. Thank you.